Hey guys, we are back with some more Salt Lake City Lakers franchise mode. And in this one, we are going to continue on with year number five. But first, we have some line changes to go over. First of all, we have Placanix on the second line instead of Heedle. Because that second line was absolutely nowhere to be found offensively. And I went, when I say nowhere, I mean literally no goals in eight games played. So we had to change something up about that line. I know we've been winning games. But when your second line isn't scoring goals at all, you got to kind of change something around there. So Hedl is on the third line now with Wright and Kane spreading the scoring out a little bit. And also Placanix creates a plus three on that second line, as you can see there. So Burakovsky up to an 89, Byfield up to an 86, and Placanix himself up to an 84. So hopefully that'll do something there for the second line and as we take a look at the power play our power play is now Palat, Faxa, Kasha, Dundas and Heedle. I decided to get Kasha on there as well as Kapanen on the second unit and I took off Burakovsky and Pokanix because Pokanix now that he's getting second line ice time on the five on five I figure he doesn't really need the power play time now and for Burakovsky he obviously was is not getting anything done offensively right now so I figured I would let him get going offensively on the five on five and what I did do with Burakovsky Hour is put him on the penalty kill because he's been really good defensively, just not the, the offense hasn't been there for him, as we see by his takeaway to giveaway ratio, 12 to 5. So I figured I would give him a shot on the penalty kill. And as a result, I had to take Faxa off of the penalty kill as his takeaway giveaway ratio wasn't exactly great. I also switched around Flurry and Goddard on the penalty kill. Going back to the power play, though, we have Wright, Byfield, Kapanen, Montour and Flurry on the second unit. So hopefully that does something for us. Those are the only line changes that I've made so far. And hopefully they work out. Because we didn't really need to make too many line changes except to the power play, penalty kill, and to the second line. I was hesitant to even break up the third line. Because Wright, Kane, and Placanix, they've been doing pretty well. Four assists for Placanix, five points for Wright, four points for Kane. And I was not going to break up the first line either. Kasha has six points. Fax has four, Kapanen has eight. They're doing pretty well. It's just that the second line was so just absolutely nowhere to be found. So we had to do something about that. I was not going to leave that alone. So with all that being done, we will now go ahead in the simulation another month and we'll see what happens in November. Zach Aston Reese has been injured with a bruised arm till November 21st. That's about a week or two away, I think. So we will get Simmons in there as a result, and that'll put Simmons on the penalty kill, which I am all right with. It's only the fourth line in the penalty kill that he was on anyway, and Simmons should do a pretty good job on the penalty kill because he's, as we know, pretty physical, and I, if I remember correctly, he did have a pretty good takeaway giveaway ratio last year. Uh, it, was, it wasn't it wasn't great, but not, not bad. So we'll leave him on the penalty kill for right now. We'll leave him as a veteran presence there, see what he can do. And now Zach Aston Reese is back, so we'll take Simmons out of the lineup. And we'll also take a look at how he did. So in five games played, he had one goal, two penalty minutes, and what was his defensive ratios looking like? He had a 3-2 to two and seven hits. So he is definitely good to have around as a 13th forward at this point in his career. So after November, we went... Six, five, and four, meaning we are now 11, seven, and five. Let's check out the stats for all of our players and the team stats. So Kapanen with 18 points, Faxa with 16, Kasha with 15, Palat with 12, Wright and Placanix with 10, Byfield with nine. So Byfield got going a little bit. He had one point before in eight games played. So that means that in 15, he has eight. Not bad. Not great, though. Aston Reese was 7, Burakovsky was 7, so once again, in 15 games played, 7 points. <laughs> Much better than before. Kane was 6, Confer was 6 as well, Heedle was 6. Heedle's unfortunately, ooh, that's rough. That is, I mean, I know he's on the third line right now, but he is having a rough go so far this season. Simmons with 1 point, so Heedle, out of all of our active forwards, he's getting the most ice time. And the least amount of points. Only six. That's brutal. And as we check faceoffs, Comfer with a 52.7, a 50.8 for Faxa, a 48.7 for Byfield, ooh, a 37.4 for Wright. That is a yikes. So maybe, maybe taking Wright off the center position temporarily would help. 
because he's getting some offense, but man, I don't think I don't think I've seen a center ever drop below forty. Drop to a thirty-seven point four. Wow, that is rough. Hits. I mean, we're we're hitting for sure. We got plenty of guys who are hitting. The only guys who don't hit really are Burakovsky and Palat as of right now. Because even Placanics and Wright, they're getting a lot of hits as well. They're almost a hit per game. So. I have no complaints physically about this team. Now, what about takeaways and giveaways? Burakovsky, Kapanen, and Wright all doing amazing so far. I mean, Burakovsky and Kapanen and Wright, actually, have over a 3-to-1 ratio of takeaways to giveaways. That is amazing. Uh, Aston Reese is pretty good as well. Comfer, Palat, Byfield, they're all good. Uh, Faxa, Heedle, uh, Kasha could all be better. Kane could be better. Uh, Placanics could be much better, obviously. But... Uh, looks like he got his first goal finally, so that's good to know. Uh, hopefully he gets better as he goes on in his career. He is only 18 years of age after all. And then 3-2 to two for Simmons. And then defensively, you have Peyton Dundas with 12 points, so he is on track to crush his point total from last year. He only had 15 points last year in 82 games. This year in 23 games, he already has 12. So he is t- definitely improving uh, in a big way here. Unfortunately, he still isn't really being physical, but that's made up for by the majority of our forwards hitting, as well as guys like Montour, Fleury, Manson, Benning, Goddard, all being physical as well. So Montour with 11 points, Fleury with 7, Manson with 6, Benning with 4, Goddard still with 0, but as long as he's focusing on defense, again, that's all I'm really judging Goddard on. Speaking of which, let's check out the hits, and Manson, Montour, yeah, see what I mean (laughs) about all these guys? I mean, Benning, Benning doesn't hit a whole lot, but still, it's made up for with Manson, Montour, Fleury, and Goddard all hitting, in addition to the majority of our forwards being well over a hit per game. So I'm not concerned about the physicality of Dundas for the time being. And in goal, you have Shesterkin with a 922 save percentage in 15 games, only six wins, four losses, and five overtime losses, and a 926 for Brassois, five wins in eight games. So no complaints from me, really. Although, I do think we should consider at least temporarily moving Shane Wright to the wing. I, I hate to do that so early, because I, I did say I wanted to leave him at center for as long as possible, but he's just struggling so much. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure Hedl will be much better on the face-off circle than, than Wright has been so far. And who knows, Wright may end up being a winger later on in his career. So team stats for goals for per game, we are sitting last in our division, 2.48. But for goals against per game, we are sitting first in the division, tied for first in any way, with a 2.43. So our lack of goal scoring is made up for by our defense and goaltending. Power play, much better than before. Before it was at a 10%, somewhere around there. Now it's at a 17.5, so that's... It's gotten much better. Penalty kill has also gotten better. It was at a 71%, I believe, before. So a 76% definite improvement. Obviously, that wasn't the prettiest month we just had. But we had more games that we got points in than not. So I'm not complaining at the moment. We're still in a playoff position. We're in third. That being said, not by much. So let's have a better December, shall we? But before we get into that, we are going to switch right to the wing temporarily. We're going to see what Heedle does at center, partially because he's been struggling to score points as well. So maybe this will benefit right at Heedle. Hopefully that is a change for the better. And we will get on with the simulation once again. Ooh, you hate to see it. Igor Shesterkin injured with a strained hamstring until December 14th. I believe that is about a week away. So for right now, we're going to have to call up Hutchinson and have Brassois as our starter for the time being. And now Shesterkin is back. We will send down Hutchinson once again. We have a trade to Ottawa. William Carlson and Braden McNabb and to Vegas. Two firsts and Thompson and Bakanov. So here we had a much better month of December. We went 8-4-1 in that month, leaving us at 19-11-6. We are actually first in our division currently, though not by much, so we can't get comfortable just yet, but things are looking up. So as we check out the stats for all of our skaters, Kasha with 29 points, Kapanen with 28, 26 for Faxa, 21 for Burakovsky. So Burakovsky has seen a pretty good jump from uh, October, where he was pointless in eight games, and now 
he's working his way back up. And that's even without power play time. So he's definitely starting to turn it on. Rack Mechanics with 19 points. Byfield with 18. Palat with 17. Wright with 15. Hedl with 13. So Hedl's, <laughs> Hedl's been struggling. Ooh. Comfort with 10. And Aston Reese with 10. Kane with 7. Kane's been struggling too. Uh, and Simmons with one point, of course, in five games. Face off percentages, you have Comfer with a 53%. Aston Reese with a 52.6. Faxa with a 51.1. Byfield with a 49.2. Heedle with a 49.1. That's what I thought. And Wright currently sitting at a 38%. Yeah, that was a pretty good change there. And hits, I mean, we know this team hits. If we don't really need to go over it every time. We know for a fact that at least 9 or 10 of our forwards are going to be hit per game because that's just how this team simulates, and I'm not complaining. And takeaways to giveaways, we know these these three, Burakovsky, Kapanen, and Wright, are very good with the takeaways to giveaway ratio. Uh, Palat has been very good as well. Aston Reese is good. Faxa could be a bit better, but I believe that's better from la- when we last checked. Confer is good. Hedl could be a bit better. Byfield is even. Akasha could be much better. Kane could be better. Mechanics could be much better as well, but he is starting to get used to the pace of the NHL. He's, uh, I would say he's on pace for roughly 40 or 45 points. Sounds about right for him. Simmons with 3-2. to two. Of course, he hasn't played in a while. And defenseman, you have Dundas with 20 points currently on the season. And you have Montour with 19. Fleury with 15. Manson with 10. Benning with 5. And Goddard <laughs> finally got his first couple of points there. In that month. And hit wise, you have 56 for Manson, 54 for Montour, 50 for Fleury, 43 for Goddard, 29 for Benning, and 12 for Dundas. And a goal, you have Shesterkin with a 923 save percentage in 25 games played and a 909 for Bressois in 12 games played. So, once again, for the most part, uh, no concerns, really. I mean, obviously, I would like some of our forwards to be doing better offensively, but we are winning games. It's also worth noting that seven of Heedle's 13 points are from the power play, so six even strength points, and there might even be, uh, yeah, there's one from uh, the penalty kill as well, so that is actually, that is five even strength points. That is unfortunate. <laughs> so even Evander Kane, who only has seven even strength, who only has seven points total, has more even strength points than Philip Heedle. That is unfortunate. And checking the team stats here, we're still not great as far as goals for go, but we're scoring more than we did at the beginning of the season. And at the same time, we're letting in basically the same amount of goals as we did before. 2.53, we are still in a very good position defensively. Obviously, we could be better offensively, but luckily, our defensive goaltending have been shutting it down. As for our power play, we are at an 18.6, so we're actually in the top half of the division. Still not ideal percentage-wise, but we're better than half of our division, so I will take it for right now. The penalty kill has gotten much better since we last checked, even since we last checked, but definitely since the start of the season. Start of the season, we were at a 71% after the first month, then we went up to a 76, then an 81. So the penalty kill is definitely staying the way it is currently. Power play could use a little bit more work, obviously, but I think we'll figure that out as the season goes along. And even if we don't, our defense is solid enough to hopefully make up for our lack of power play. Though, that being said, I don't think it's something that we should just ignore. So I guess we will take a look at the power play here. Palat, I think, will move down to the second unit with Byfield and Kapanen so that we could get right some more time. Ooh, you know what? I'm t- <laughs> I just realized Heedle's still on the power play. I think I'm going to take Heedle off the power play. He has been absolutely just nowhere to be found offensively, pretty much. And you know what? Since Burakovsky's going offensively again, we will put him back on the power play with Dundas on the point there. And then Palat, Byfield, Kapanen, Fleury, and Montour. I really wish Fleury would be scoring a bit more, but for the most part, this looks pretty good. When I said it was close in the division, it is very close. From first to fifth, the difference is three points. <laughs> so we have to stay on top of things, and let's hope that we have a very good month of January. Because if we don't, then we may find ourselves sitting outside of a playoff spot. And just about immediately, as soon as we start this month, Quinton Byfield injured with a pole groin until January 19th. Yeah, let's get right up there with Placanix and Burakovsky, and then it'll be 
I think Palat up here with Heedle and Kane, and then here will be Wayne Simmons. And Quentin Byfield is back, and the timing could not be better because we are uh, not doing well. <laughs> And you'll see what I mean in a minute here. We are currently 2-6 and six on the month, and our two wins came within the past two games. We went on a six-game losing streak to start the month, and that was the time that Quentin Byfield was out with an injury. So I don't know if that was just coincidental, or if Byfield actually has that much of an effect on our defense, but... That was an absolutely brutal run, and it would not surprise me if we are currently sitting outside of a playoff spot. We are not, but we're very close to that being said. We are only four points ahead of the seventh place Jets, and we are only two points ahead of the Avalanche, and we are only three points ahead of the Wild and Stars. We absolutely cannot afford another stretch like that. And I think I may have found part of the reason why. That first line has dried up big time lately. Kasha only has 14 goals and 18 assists. Baxa only 30 points. Kapanen only 32 points as well. So yeah, that first line has dried up tremendously. And I would imagine the second line hasn't been much better. Yeah, the second line's been brutal as well. Byfield only with 18 points in 38 games. That needs to be better, and right with... Oh, man. Yeah, the scoring's dry up big time. Wow. Right only with 15 points so far on the season. Placanics with 22. Burkowski with 27. Yikes. Hedl with 18. Kane with 10. Oh, man. Yeah, the scoring is a much bigger problem than I thought. <laughs> So, we have come up with some new lines here. Burakovsky, Byfield, and Wright is the first line. Pekanix, Faxa, and Kasha is the second line. Kane, Heedle, and Kapanen is the third line. Palat, Comfort, and Aston Reese is the fourth line. We need to get something going here. Decided to spread out the scoring. Basically, on every line, there is an 85 or two 85s or above. You have Heedle and Kapanen as the 86s on the third line. Faxa and Kasha on the second line. And then Burakovsky on the first line with Byfield and Wright. If these lines don't work, we need to make some sort of trade at the trade deadline, or even before, way before that maybe, uh, to get some more goal scoring, because this is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I, I know we're not exactly the most talented team as of yet, but still, we should be scoring more goals than we are, with uh, especially, uh, I mean, with the amount of dry spells that we've seen this year, particularly out of guys like Heedle, and, and Evander Kane as well. And and then uh, the first line, the old first line that we had, Kasha, Kapanen, and Faxa, they just completely dried up in that month. Uh, even Placanix has been quiet as of late as well. If we do not get at least three out of these next five games, preferably four or all five, <laughs> you know, obviously, in order to make up for that six-game losing streak that we went on, Ideally, we should go on a five-game winning streak. Well, I guess it would turn into a seven-game winning streak should we win all five of these games. But still, we need to make up for that six-game losing streak. That was absolutely unacceptable. We need to have a good stretch here. If we don't, it is almost guaranteed that we are going to be making a move before the trade deadline on February 1st because this is just ridiculous. Absolutely bad timing. Josh Manson out with an MCL sprain until February 24th. <laughs> <laughs> that is about a month away. So it looks like Connor Murphy is going to be filling in for the first time this season. And we will get, I guess, well, yeah, Benning creates that plus three with Montour. So we'll do that. Although you have a minus two here with Murphy and Goddard. So maybe, do we get DeMello in instead? Uh, no, <laughs> it's a minus three there. So maybe it would actually be better to just... All right, yeah, we'll get Goddard with Montour and then Benning with Murphy. That'll work. Okay, so we did get three wins out of these past five games, and the two games that we lost were in a shootout. So I can't complain. We got points in all of them, but still, the offense is, with the exception of the game against Winnipeg, still definitely a concern. We did score four against Columbus plus the shootout. Then we scored two against each of LA and Pittsburgh, four against Calgary, and eight against Winnipeg. So maybe we roll with these lines up until, I would say, the game against Vancouver. If we're still not ideal offensively, then we should probably make a trade. So that being said, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>